Good morning to you. Friday morning, another week has gone by, another weekend looms, um, hopefully into our last week of level four and into the changes that come with that. And I would just ask, as we start this morning, I was reading earlier that there has been an intervention through faith-based organizations um, to consult with the presidency around opening up of our religious services again across the board. And so I would be asking maybe it's time for us really earnestly to start praying. I know we should have been, and I, I, I trust that you have been praying, but it really is time for us now to um, concert our efforts in our prayer, to allow us to, to come together again. Yes, we're going to come under very different rules and restrictions, but I think it's time for us um, to be able to worship together again. And so I would ask you to be praying that we would be able to open up and do what we are, are called to do. And so, yeah, I thought as we get into the book of Philippians again this morning, we come to chapter 3, and, and Paul is really ending off his letter here because uh, he uses the words finally, and, and he sort of changed his pattern now. He's giving us a warning, and then he just talks about this, this absolute joy, this prize that awaits for those of us who are called um, into his, his salvation. And so it, it really is for me an exciting piece of scripture. It's also a very um, serious piece of scripture too, as he gives us a warning. And so I just want to read it for us quickly, um, part of it, and we'll talk a, a little while and then we'll move on. So um, Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. So he begins by just reminding them that in the Lord we find life. In the Lord, no matter what we're facing, no matter the struggles, remember when James was writing, um, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what difficulty, no matter what um, obstacle or challenge stands before us, he says to us, when we're looking through the perspective from the cross, we realize that we have already gained the victory. We are already overcomers. Um, he writes to the Romans, we are more than conquerors. And so he says, rejoice, rejoice. And he says, I will write this, no trouble for me to write this again and again. I think his whole life, as he says, my, my, the love of Christ compels me. He would just keep, if Paul was still around today, he would still be saying, love the Lord your God. He would still be, be preaching the love of Jesus for his people. He'd be still be preaching salvation and righteousness from Christ. He'd still be talking about what Jesus did on the cross. And so he comes in with these words and then, then he quickly changes tack because he knows what's coming. And when we look around the world today, we see exactly what Paul warns us of is a reality today. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in in the flesh, that I myself have reasons for such confidence. He's, he's warning them that there's going to be people that are going to come and twist everything. There are going to be people who are going to um, come in and change everything very subtly, very smoothly, and at other times just blatant lies. Um, busy prepping at the moment for, for Sunday's sermon and realizing again, as, as Paul writes to Timothy, Paul was very concerned about leadership in the church and he was very concerned about false teaching that was going to come into the church and was going to affect what was happening, was going to affect the health of the church and ultimately it would affect the, the, the progress of the church. And so again, he warns this church, they were doing well, they were, they were doing well in everything they needed to be doing, but he says, be careful. And I want to say to us, we need to be careful as well, because it's often in the complacency of doing well. It's in the complacency of thinking, well, we're getting this right. We, the church is growing. We have great worship. The messages are good. We have some good fellowship. Um, nothing is coming against us. And it's in that complacency that the devil works. And, and he says, be careful. Some will come, the mutilators of the flesh, the circumcision people. What he's actually saying is there will be people that will come in and be putting rules in the rules that are not biblical, and we'll pick that up even on Sunday again, um, saying you cannot marry or you cannot eat certain foods or you must do this to find salvation. Or you know, They were talking about um, circumcision, a, a Jewish right, but they were saying if you weren't circumcised, then you were out of the covenant and you weren't saved. Remember the counsel they had later on was this argument around should you be circumcised or shouldn't you? And, and Paul's saying be very careful of that. Be careful of all these other rules and, and religious um, acts that need to be put into place or people think should be put into place to find salvation. Uh, one of the things I've really struggled with in my time of ministry is the whole understanding of how tradition has become so important, how tradition very often has become the overriding factor instead of biblical um, theology. Tradition has overruled the things that are written in scripture, so sometimes the law has actually um, overshadowed grace. 
because people say, well, but you must do this. And, and that's often a very uh, a religion of, of works, which Paul is, is very much against because we know it's, we have a faith that is based on, on, on grace. It's, it's a faith that is based on relationship with Jesus Christ and what he did, not what we did. Um, we should know by now. Um, if you've been listening for long enough, that we cannot save ourselves. There's no way we can bring on any kind of righteousness that is of value without Jesus. And so he's saying to them, be very careful, watch out for these mutilators. And he says, we should be reminded, he says, yeah, we are. We are the ones who don't put any store in that, no confidence in the flesh. We worship by the Spirit of God who glory in Christ Jesus. We we glory in, he says, Christ Jesus. We glory in the in the Savior who was Jesus. And, and so he's just reminding them yet again, even though they're doing well, he's just reminding them yet again, your salvation is not in yourself. Your salvation is not in works. Your salvation is not in an outward sign. And often that's what we, we get caught up with even in the church, the outward appearance of salvation. He says, remember, it's not that salvation is only found in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. He says, look, look at me as he goes on. He says, if anybody, <clears throat> sorry, if anybody should have confidence in the flesh, if um, <clears throat> anybody should have an, an outward expression that should bring salvation in today's, um, I'm thinking in today's world, he says, look at it. If anyone else thinks he has, has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. And, and he's very right here. Circumcised on the eighth day, that, that was a crucial time for for um Jews to be circumcised, and, and as I've read over the years, I've also discovered that um, medically it's also the best day. Now, I don't know how true that is, but medically they say the eighth day is the ideal day for circumcision physically. I don't know if it's to do with um, clotting of blood and all that. I don't know. But he says, I met that rule. But um, of the people of Israel, in other words, his, his bloodline literally is great. Of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, he's saying, if you want to talk about a Hebrew, here he is. Here I am. Look at me. I am the perfect picture of what it means to be a Hebrew. In regard to the law, he says, a Pharisee. In other words, a learned, trained scholar, a man who was able to interpret the scriptures, a man who was able to teach the scriptures, a man who was an, an authority on the scriptures, he says, that is me. As for zeal, persecuting the church. So, if you want to see somebody who was serious about God, Look at me. He said, this, this upstart church is rising up following this guy called Jesus. That's almost blasphemy. He said, look what I was doing. I was destroying the church. I was fighting for the, the truth of God. I, I was killing people. I mean, we know that he stood by when Stephen was stoned. He, he says, for persecuting, I'm, I'm number one on the list. Look at me. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. That was such a huge thing for them at that time. Legalistic righteousness. In other words, using the outward stuff, using the law to to look at salvation. And he says, faultless. I met everything. I did everything. If you looked at me, you couldn't get a better picture of what righteousness meant. You couldn't get a better picture of legalistic zeal. You couldn't get a better picture of a Hebrew. But he finally understood when he came to saving faith that day on the road to Damascus. That all of that meant nothing. That without Jesus Christ, without the righteousness of Christ being placed onto him, none, none of those things meant anything. Sadly, it did for many that day. And sadly, nothing has changed in many churches, even today, even in many denominations. That hasn't changed today. We will still see um, people adding, adding things like saying, if you're not baptized, then you're not saved. Not a biblical interpretation. Yet even today we find this this rule of circumcision being added on to salvation, added on in a way, works added to the grace of God. And anything added to the grace of God is worthless and, and in itself would actually be a sin. And so Paul's come to that place of saying everything that I am, everything I have done is worth nothing without the salvation that I find through the cross of Calvary and through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so he just lays it on thick to them and says, Guys, you really need to get it right. He says, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And anything that made me look good was a waste of time. Anything that came and gave me glory or me honor was a waste of time because it's nothing to do with me. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what Jesus did for me. I consider it loss for the sake of Christ. He said, it's all about him. I've got to ask ourselves, what is our lives really all about? And for, for many of us, um, striving for success, nothing wrong with that, but at what cost? Striving for financial freedom, nothing wrong with that, but at what cost? Uh, very often, uh, when we look at Scripture, it talks about we gain the whole world, but we lose our, our very souls. 
I think Paul's concerned around that, that we need to be careful because we can get caught in this trap very, very quickly and lose everything and not have what we should have, which is salvation, what, is, what we should have, the righteousness of Christ over us. What is more, he says, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. He's, he's woken up in his journey to this incredible joy that comes from his relationship with, with Jesus. That's why he starts with rejoice in the Lord. He says everything, and I've already said this, everything that he thought was of value, everything that seemed to give him any kind of glory was rubbish. I love that word he uses, yeah? Because we get caught up in it and we, we give rubbish this huge value. Now, I'm not saying all tradition and all ritual and all legalistic kind of interpretation is rubbish, but we've got to be very careful not to allow that to surpass the greatness of God. We've got to be very sure not to allow that to surpass the truth of Scripture and the truth of how we interpret Scripture. And I know sometimes there are some, some arguments around how to interpret it, but we need to be very careful that we don't diminish what the word says about Jesus and what the word says about his righteousness unto us for salvation. We, we need to be very sure that us being new creations is not by anything we have done, but by everything that he has already done. Going back to that perspective of looking through the cross, from the cross, into our lifestyle changes everything when we realize that this whole thing around circumcision and law and outward appearance jesus dealt with all of that at calvary over two thousand years ago he dealt with it which means we change our thinking and we look forward now and saying everything i have is because of him and so everything we do nowadays that would really build into our own kind of image into our own kind of prestige or position or outward appearance for people to say oh look how good he is look how great he is look what a great christian he is often we hear that and often it's, it's it really has no real value because christ is not the center and so this morning is I, I wanted to go on a little bit about i want to know christ but i think we could look at that maybe into next week what that means as we live out our christian life but this is the prize that we look for as Christians, this surpassing greatness of Jesus, the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. How many of us could say that we have that same passion to know Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, and our King? That's what that means, Christ Jesus, my Lord, Savior, friend, and King. And so, friends, really, I hope something to challenge us this morning. We're getting those every morning this morning from myself and from Jordan. Let's look at our lifestyles. Let's look at what we're doing. Let's know that by our own works and our own outward appearance, we have no salvation. It's only in Jesus Christ who gives us his righteousness. And so, blessings for today. Enjoy it. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe.